Welcome. Good to see you all. Do we want to wait a little bit maybe or is this pretty much going to be everybody? In an effort to keep everyone informed and uh, directing uh, your attention if we can to the things that we're doing, um, we just want to come together and have our, our normal press conference. Uh, we had a nice discussion regarding press conferences earlier and how we could uh, uh, better make ourselves available to you. And that was a good discussion. I really appreciated that you guys came by and talked with me about that. Um, a lot of things going on in the building. There's a lot of talk uh, regarding well taxes. Uh, the uh, Senate Finance is, is gathering information, building or putting together the, the building blocks uh, for a, a budget that we'll ultimately do. And so we've invited the, uh, the two co-chairs of finance. But as has been the case uh, for many years here, there's always something dealing with resources, oil taxes, gases, credits, those kinds of things. So we asked Senator Giesel to be here as well. Um, rather than make lengthy statements, why don't we just go to questions? So. Um, no questions? We're adjourned. Oh, <laughs> Becky, go ahead. Becky Bohr with the Associated Press. Uh, Senator Hoffman, when um, you were at the, news con the first news conference, you'd mentioned some of the areas that the uh, set of finance would be looking at for potential cuts, and one was education. And um, after that, we heard from the governor and his state of the state that, um, that the commissioner and the Board of Education would be working on their own sort of reform proposal um, but he said that um, he would not get those final recommendations till later this year. Um, can you talk about how um, <laughs> the committee, I guess, plans to, to do its work? Is there any in, uh, intent to wait until that report is finalized? Well, um, first of all, um, the governor's office is going to do what the governor's office does, and I don't know what that time frame is. Um, I don't believe we're at a stage where we wait, we have a crisis on our hands and the governor needs to move at his pace and we need to move at our pace as quickly as possible. You know, the House is going through their process and uh, we have a deadline. One, one thing we know constitutionally we have to do is pass the operating budget. But as the governor said um, in the state of the state, we're in a crisis situation and uh, we need to uh, look at ways to speed up the dog team. You know, the, the team on the House and the team in the Senate uh, are only as fast as their slowest dog. So it, it takes some finessing to, to go through that process. The, the issue that, uh, that we're dealing with, I think, in the Senate, and, and we did go through extensive hearings um, uh, with the with Senate Finance Committee members to come up with uh, with our targets, uh, and it wasn't uh, you know it wasn't uh, it was given very very serious consideration. You know when you're talking about uh, a five percent reduction, that seems small, but when you look at the number, it's large. But when you look at asking the people of Alaska or the, the state in a time of crisis to reduce their budget by one nickel out of a dollar when we're in a crisis situation, that doesn't seem to be, um, to be impossible to achieve. You know, but it's, it's what, when you go through the mathematical formula and come out with education, as you said, that number is huge, 65 plus 60 million. But we can't assume that we're going to have reform, revenue measure reform. We tried that, the Senate tried that. We, we're now in the, uh, in the 30th Alaska legislature. Everyone is assuming that since the Senate passed it in the 29th Alaska legislature, that's going to happen again in this legislature. There's new members, new organizations, new compositions, and uh, we have to work through that process. So um, people of Alaska need to realize that, uh, that 
if things don't change, we're going to be in a drastic financial shortfall. Three, you cut $3 billion out of the state's operating budget. That's the realization that you need to start from and uh, move forward from that point. So I know the press is dying to have Senator Hoffman identify the slowest dog, but let's <laughs> Shauna? Shauna? Oh. Um, this question is for Senator Hoffman, Shauna Crondall, Alaska Education Update. Um, it's about Senate Bill 18. Uh, the bill, so far as I can tell, all it does is it adds third class boroughs to existing statutes on REA formation. Well, there are no existing third class boroughs, and statutes prohibit the formation of new third class bureau boroughs. So, what is the purpose of this bill, and how would it affect? existing school districts well the intent behind uh, Senate bill 18 is to give an option in in state statutes for uh, regions of the state to the intent is to form a borough to address um, uh, and have limited powers in the area of, uh, of energy and uh, this is looking at the uh, Primarily the Chilista region, we have a Donlan Creek that uh, some say is 10 times larger than Fort Knox and Fairbanks. So there, there is an economic uh, engine out there that is going to be coming on board um, that uh, could assist the region. Um, and I don't believe, and I've talked to several people out in the region, they're interested in the region benefiting from that uh, from that uh, massive resource and uh, they are uh, we've talked uh, quite extensively myself with with people and they they are interested in looking at is is there ways to uh, lower the energy cost in one of the highest energy cost areas of the state with the the lowest um, uh, per capita income so that is uh, the basis behind the the legislation and it as you said it's just going to put on the 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 into the statutes an option for the state including uh, the Chilista region so um, does the bill also remove the prohibition against the formation of new third class boroughs and currently in statutes the only authority third class boroughs are have is as an area-wide school district they can provide um, education, public education, and they can tax to pay for that education. That's the only authority they have. I would say that it would be a different form, a, a, another option for a third class borough, leaving that one in existence and having a, a different um, third class borough option. Okay, so you're going to change what the powers are? Add. You're going to change the powers of third class boroughs? No, I'm going to add an, another option for third class boroughs. James. James Brooks from the Juno Empire. You folks probably saw the folks protesting outside this morning. What's your opinion on the president's executive order on immigration? From what I know about it, I think it, it affects of the all the people coming in so far, 109 people. Um, the people that he has, or the countries that he has put on the list to restrict immigration. I think we're all in uh, President Obama's executive order uh, regarding um, either terrorist states or states participating in terrorist activities. So it's a pretty limited uh, restriction on immigration. It's not in our purview, but that's my opinion is that it's pretty limited as well. So if obviously we're a sovereign nation, if we can't determine uh, who comes into our country, based on terrorist activities and those things that are a threat to national security, uh, we've got bigger problems than we thought we did. So you, do, you support it then? Yeah. Okay. Steve? Hi, uh, Steve Quinn of Bloomberg. I know I've asked this question at some of the caucuses before, and they're probably tired of hearing it, but I'll ask it again. I understand what your priorities are for the budget. When do you think we will see a plan to address the fiscal gap, whether it closes it this year, next year, five years from now, when do you think we'll You're see You're already seeing that already. Uh, you, we have the uh, spending limit that was 
introduced, we have Senator Stedman's bill that I believe is being heard in uh, State Affairs on Thursday. Um, and of course, the Finance Committee is already working on a, on a budget, which we said will be reduced. So there's already some pieces and parts that are moving as we begin week three. But any modeling where we can see numbers, if we cut this, well, we, uh, to say we don't have, let me just put it this way, we don't have a dog and pony show. What we have uh, is action that's already uh, rolling. Uh, so no, we don't have a, 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 a model necessarily, other than the one that you've seen for probably the last two or three years that, that shows what, what happens with our earnings, um, excuse me, not our earnings, but our, uh, our savings accounts. Uh, when juxtaposed against our spending. So those are out there still. And, and Rena, is there something on our website regarding that? Or is it dated, do you know, regarding the, the budget? Bruce, is there something on, the, on our website regarding the, uh, any kind of fiscal, uh, fiscal issues or anything like that? Okay. Yep. Maybe coming soon. Hmm? The history of reductions made over the last four years. Oh, that's on there? Okay, yeah. Is that, is that good, Steve? Okay, Nat, go ahead. Uh, good morning, Matt Hurst from morning. Alaska Dispatch News. Um, so last year we heard from you guys pretty emphatically uh, that you guys were not enthusiastic about taxes of any kind as a way to close the deficit. Um, I'm curious whether um, or to what extent it, that is still sort of whether you guys would rule out taxes, particularly if you get other concessions from the House, uh, like a uh, revenue or a spending limit? Um, you know, is that is that something you guys are starting out by saying you're opposed to, or is, is that not off the table in, in your mind, as far as like a broad-based like sales or income tax or something along those lines? You'll, you'll see a lot of hearings, I think, or at least uh, we've, we've had tax bills come into um, uh, to, to be to be referred, most of them have gone to labor and commerce. I think uh, trans transportation has one of them, the, the motor fuels tax. And you know, to say we're against something, whether it was last year or this year, those are those are personal members have have strong opinions, and they should. Uh, they're mostly reflecting their their constituents' desires. Uh, we're we're going to hear the tax bills. We're going to examine them uh, and let me just back up one one step and that is that the chairman will decide w what they hear I I'm not going to make those decisions um, but we'll give them due consideration but there is an overarching uh, view of this caucus that is it's informal but as you talk to people in their offices and in the halls most people don't believe it's a good idea to start looking at taking people's money away from them before we have addressed our own spending problems, that the government is needs to address its own spending problems first, or at least have a, a plan to do that um, before we start asking people to send in portions of their paychecks or something like that. So. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of feeling against income tax. They'll get due consideration. The chairman will decide which ones they do or do not hear. Our focus right now is on reducing spending, um, use of the earnings reserve, and a spending limit. Is there, is there a recognition, or maybe more of a recognition, that perhaps just given the sort of politi political reality that you guys are working with, especially in the House, that maybe a tax will end up having to be part 